Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today we're going to be discussing elderberry and the immune modulating effects of this wonderful berry. We'll also be discussing and debunking some of the myths that have been floating around the internet about elderberry and cytokine storm. For those of you that don't know, elderberries are a deep violet berry that can be found in the wild and have been used for centuries in herbal medicine to treat things like cold and flu. Other than containing important nutrients, elderberries also contain medicinal constituents that are immune modulating. These medicinal constituents include quercetin, anthocyanin, polyphenols, and phytosterols. Now, as I'm going to share with you throughout this video, there's a large body of research that shows that these medicinal constituents and other constituents of elderberry actually powerfully enhance and modulate the immune system and decrease your risk for infection. There's even studies that show that it may be preventative and protective for treating the COVID-19 coronavirus. But before we get into those studies, I think in order for you to fully understand how elderberry really works, we need to quickly talk about what the immune system is and how it works. Now I know some of you might be thinking that the immune system seems like a very complex system. And while it certainly has its complexities, the basic function of it and purpose of it is actually a very easy to understand phenomena. You see, the immune system is the confront of the body. It's basically a complex series of chemical impulses and chemical secretions or cellular excretions that help your body maintain biological homeostasis or balance. Meaning that when some sort of invader, whether it's a pathogen or a virus or a toxin enters your body, your body is not disturbed or disrupted and it can maintain its normal function. So the job of the immune system is to help to prevent infection or biological disturbance from any sort of foreign substance. And it does so through the production of various different sorts of immune cells and cytokines, which are pro like substances, which can also help to assist in the removal and destruction of various pathogens, toxins, and other foreign invaders. Now, in a healthy person, the immune system responds appropriately by secreting the right balance of typically white blood cells or immune cells known as effector lymphocytes. These include things like T and B helper cells, macrophages, and phagocytes. And although they sound like very complex terms, these words literally just mean that they're cells that can actually eat and engulf pathogens or bacteria and eliminate them from your body. In addition to these immune cells, your immune system will secrete cytokines, which actually go to infected or injured areas where let's say a virus or pathogen might be, and it signals to the immune cells where the virus or the pathogen or bacteria is, so that way the immune cells can get to that area and go to work eradicating whatever pathogen is in the body. Now again, in a healthy person, this process is normal, and for the most part, the body's producing a lot of these immune cells in just the right amount of cytokines to send the communication signals to the immune cells to get the job done. However, when the immune system becomes compromised or suppressed, typically due to stress and a variety of different factors that can lead to improper immune function. So for example, stress hormones like cortisol and estrogens can actually atrophy important immune glands, which derange the functioning of the immune system. If this happens, your immune system produces much less of the very effective immune cells and a lot more of the cytokines. And you can look at some of the cytokines as sort of like grenades from the immune system. They will definitely get the job done in a eradicate pathogens and toxins from the body, but they also produce a lot of collateral damage, which is typically in the form of inflammation. So for example, some of the pro-inflammatory cytokines that are present in this phenomenon known as cytokine storm, like interleukin-6, they can go to an infected area and they can eradicate a virus, but at the expense of the healthy tissues and cells surrounding the area. So they're very explosive in other words, and although effective, they produce a lot of additional damage, which can lead to not just inflammation, but fibrosis. And this is what typically happens in people with weak or compromised immune function, is that they get a viral infection, and instead of producing a lot of these very effective 
effector lymphocytes and very efficient white blood cells and immune cells, their bodies respond by producing a lot more of these less efficient and more destructive pro-inflammatory cytokines as sort of a last resort and a kamikaze sort of attack on the virus. So it might be able to eradicate the virus, but it often produces a lot of tissue damage at the same time, which is why you see lung fibrosis as a common side effect of very severe viral infections in people who are immune compromised. So the real secret or goal for proper immune function is to support the immune system's ability to produce a lot more of the efficient and effective white blood cells, T or B helper cells, the natural killer cells, interferons, the macrophages, the phagocytes, and a lot less of the pro-inflammatory cytokines. So what you want, in other words, is a balance of cytokines and immune cells. And typically, you want to be producing a lot less of the pro-inflammatory cytokines and a lot more of the inhibitory cytokines, which act as communicator cells to the immune cells. And so getting back to elderberry, this is actually exactly what elderberry does. It doesn't just stimulate the production of immune cells and cytokines it helps to actually modulate the production of both of these things. So this is why it is a immune modulator and not technically classified as an immunostimulator or an immunodepressant. It helps to regulate the balance of cytokines and immune cells produced by the innate immune system. To give you an example of what I mean, Right now, there's an idea circulating on the internet that elderberry is potentially not safe or effective for treating RNA-enveloped viral infections like coronavirus, which tends to affect or infect the upper respiratory system. Because there are studies that show that elderberry supplementation may increase the production of interleukin-6, which is one of the pro-inflammatory cytokines that are present in a phenomenon known as cytokine storm, which is basically a phenomenon that occurs in immunocompromised people, where they're not capable of producing enough of the immune cells and instead overproduce the pro-inflammatory cytokines, again, in that sort of kamikaze fashion that we talked about earlier. Now, the thing is, is that although elderberry may stimulate the production of interleukin-6, first of all, keep in mind that as this study points out, interleukin-6 is still effective at eradicating viruses and actually preventing tissue damage in the right amount. It's only when it's produced in excess where it's truly problematic and inflammatory and fibrosis inducing. And elderberry doesn't just stimulate one cytokine. Remember, it's not an immunostimulator. It is a balanced immune modulating herb that also happens to stimulate the production of inhibitory cytokines like interleukin 38, which is actually the inhibitory or opposing cytokine to interleukin 6 that regulates it. So keep in mind that almost every chemical or substance produced by the body has a counter substance, something that opposes it and regulates it. That's that's how the body achieves homeostasis. And the fact of the matter is most immune modulators have this effect on the immune system, balancing the production of cytokines and immune cells. And there are even studies that show that supplementing with elderberry can actually, in many cases, decrease pro-inflammatory cytokines like interleukin-1 beta, also interleukin-6, along with tumor necrosis factor alpha. At the same time, remember, they stimulate the production of a lot of the effector lymphocytes in opposing or inhibitory cytokines that help to produce a more balanced immune response. So if you're wondering whether or not elderberry is safe to take for upper respiratory infections, as you're about to see in a moment, there are actually tons of studies that show that it is effective and safe for treating other types of viral infections, such as influenza, for example. And it may actually be beneficial for treating COVID-19 or coronavirus because as an immune modulator, it's going to help balance the production of cytokines in somebody that might be producing too much of the pro-inflammatory cytokines and not enough of the inhibitory ones. So with all this in mind, let's take a quick look at a couple of the studies that verify the protective antiviral and immune modulating effects of elderberry. To begin, let's take a look at some of the studies that show elderberry's antiviral effects. According to this study, elderberry in fact has had an inhibitory effect on the H1N1 virus and compares favorably to the anti-influenza activities of Tamiflu. Additionally, both astragalus and elderberry support the production of natural killer cells and interferons, which provide antiviral effects toward a wide variety of viral strains and may help to prevent the spread of viruses. Both of these herbs can be found in our elderberry plus formula. Lastly, astragalus and elderberry both have cytotoxic effects. 
attacks, which means that they can eradicate a virally infected cell. And to top it all off, elderberries, aside from being antiviral, they are also anti-inflammatory, which is highly beneficial if you have a viral infection because it will reduce your inflammation. In fact, evidence shows that the phenolic compounds in elderberry are potent modulators of the immune response and specifically inflammation. They are shown to decrease the overproduction of inflammatory cytokines, like the one that Nick was talking about. As you can see, elderberry is not only beneficial to prevent viruses, but it's also beneficial if you have a virus because it helps to reduce inflammation, which then decreases your symptoms. So in conclusion, elderberry is actually a potent immune modulator, although it often is labeled as an immune booster. Because it can modulate the production of pro-inflammatory cytokines, it's not just preventative, it's also going to be therapeutic. Now before we go, I want to give you a couple of quick tips though as to how to take elderberry extract for these purposes or for these benefits. The thing that's most important is that you take an actual extract or a decoction of elderberry. The whole raw berry is actually inedible. You, you can't eat it, but it's going to have tannins and properties that make it somewhat toxic and maybe upsetting to the digestive system. So like with most herbs and most plants, they're most medicinal and digestible and non-toxic when they are properly prepared. And the standard or traditional way to do this is either to make an extract or a, a decoction, which is basically a very strong tea. So in terms of getting this done, you can do it yourself. You can harvest wild berries and dry them and cook them down and make your own syrup. Or you can purchase an elderberry extract, which is, if done properly, basically a strong decoction, usually mixed with a high quality raw honey, which has its own antibacterial antimicrobial and immune modulating properties itself. So for those of you interested in making your own, we always encourage that. You can find recipes online on how to make it yourself. We'll likely make one in the future. Or to spare you some time, I'd highly recommend checking out our Elderberry Plus Syrup, which you can find here. And it's basically a simple formulation of Again, high quality organic elderberries that have been decocted and cooked down by Noel, mixed with the high quality raw honey. And we throw a little bit of astragalus extract in there, which we touched on briefly in this video, which is also a very powerful immune modulator. Something really great about astragalus is that it has natural occurring selenium, which is not just an important mineral for proper thyroid function and a lot of other enzymatic processes in the body, but studies have found that if you have a certain selenium level above 98.5, seven, that you're actually strongly immune against a lot of RNA enveloped viruses like Ebola virus, like influenza, and even coronaviruses. And in addition to the astragalus, we also happen to throw in a high quality orange peel extract, which in of itself is very therapeutic for the lungs. It contains a compound, a flavonoid known as naringenin, which has very strong anti-inflammatory properties and is particularly beneficial for reducing inflammation in the lungs, where a lot of these RNA enveloped viruses tend to have a high affinity towards. So combine the elderberry, the astragalus root, and the orange peel make the elderberry syrup plus a very potent version of the traditional or standard elderberry syrup. So in terms of how to actually take elderberry syrup plus, we recommend taking one teaspoon per day. And it's actually very safe to take over the long term. Unlike actual immune stimulating herbs, like let's say gold seal or echinacea, elderberry, as you've learned, is more of an immune modulator, especially when it's paired with something like astragalus root. So meaning that you don't have to worry about becoming sort of immune to it. Whereas if you take echinacea or gold seal all the time, it can stimulate the immune system and decrease its effectiveness. Whereas elderberry syrup plus is not gonna have that same sort of effect. However, you're probably gonna only really need to take it around cold and flu season, which is really just the effect or the side effect of winter time and the lack of light, which tends to downregulate the metabolism and the immune system system. Thanks for tuning in to today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and you can find our Elderberry Syrup Plus in the description box below. Make sure that you're following us on Instagram and our blog.